So what exactly do I mean by a design gaffe? Well, it's an example of poor taste, a small and crucially unavoidable or unnecessary addition to an otherwise aesthetically pleasing design. In other words, it's that one touch where you just think to yourself, mm, they shouldn't have done that. How many times have you seen a pretty girl and thought, wow, she would look even prettier with a tattoo on her neck or a piercing through her nose or purple hair? Do you look at this photo of Harvey Specter and think, hmm, he would look great with a man bun? It's a peculiarly human trait as far as I can tell. You rarely, if ever, see a design gaffe in nature or among animals where unnecessary flourishes are quickly dealt with. And just to be clear, a foot de goût, as the French call it, isn't to be confused with ugly. No, it's not quite the same thing. This is an ugly motorbike. No, an error in taste is that little detail too far that you just wish they hadn't thought of. And I'm also only talking about gaffes by manufacturers and so won't be including those personal touches that individual owners take delight in adding to their bikes. Maybe the subject of another video. It's an extremely subjective topic, of course, but I encounter what I consider these foot de goût everywhere, even on motorbikes. Now, I was born in the UK, but I spent 35 years of my adult life in France, a country that's generally recognised as having good taste, and maybe that's why they have this alarm bell expression in their language, where English in English we don't. Here's a quick test to see if you've got the gist of it before we start on the bikes. Can you spot the glaring faux pas on this BMW X2. Yeah, it's easy, isn't it? It was designed at the factory, unfortunately, but it looks as if you've bought a knockoff BMW badge on eBay and slapped it on the C pillar to really ram home the idea that you can afford a BMW. And it can't be removed because they've set it into the bodywork. Still, it could be worse, I suppose. So now we're all clear on what constitutes a foot de goût, let's start with an entirely avoidable example of poor taste in motorcycle design from my compatriots at Hinkley. Take the recently revealed Triumph Speed Triple RR James Bond edition. Now even the name is a bit cringy, can you imagine telling your mates that you've just ordered a Speed Triple RR James Bond edition? Bit sad isn't it? And what's with the numbering scheme? Fair enough that they only make 60, that's marketing for you. And great if you have number one, or possibly number 60, but what's the point in having a plaque that says you own number 12 or number 37? These aren't really for de goût though, are they? No, but these tank stickers certainly are. Now it's interesting, I reckon Trials Photographer must have spotted these and turned the studio lights down a bit. Look how dark they've made the photos. The idea of sticking all the Bond movies on the tank is a bit dodgy to begin with, but it's also been really poorly executed and the real-life images taken at the recent Intermot show in Cologne reveal the true horror. Look at those outlines around each logo which have only been made worse by the clear coat on top. It's as if Triumph have bought a bumper sheet of James Bond stickers from eBay for $8.99, slapped them on the tank and asked the guy in the paint booth to spray over them. Yeah, we can charge 30 grand for that, no problem. Only 60 examples available and they've all been sold, mind, so that's 60 speculators with questionable taste. Have you ever wondered why human beings like symmetry? Perfectly symmetrical faces are one key factor in defining beauty, so why should this be? Well, back when our ancestors survived on wild fruit and vegetables and the occasional wild animal, looking for symmetry in nature was a good way of telling whether the fruit was okay to eat. I mean, these deformities may look amusing, but there's something in the back of our brains telling us to be careful. Maybe better eat the symmetrical apple on the next branch, right? So what did BMW think would be a good idea a few years ago? Asymmetrical faces on all their bikes. And they still do with some models, look at the GS. Okay, so it hasn't hurt sales, but why BMW just give us a symmetrical face? Lopsided isn't cool, it's weird and it's unnecessary. As the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow reminded us back in 2014, Tartan is a challenging design to work with at the best of times. Honda, however, appear to have accepted the challenge and given us this on the 2023 Monkey. Now, I bought one of the new Monkeys when they first came out in 2018 and I enjoyed modding it, as you can see. 
I even added some way over the top Olin's rear shocks, but not once did I say to myself, you know what, that seat could do with a tartan top. Okay, the monochrome pattern on the black and yellow bikes isn't too bad, but the full on red is just way over the top. It's supposed to hark back to the 60s, I suppose. I get that, but just because something is old doesn't make it desirable. Oh, and credit where credit's due, Good call on the gold forks Honda, yellow forks would have looked distinctly odd, so gold was the right way to go. But you should have painted the headlight bracket black because yellow on gold doesn't go. Just saying. Here's a good example of a detail too far from Austria this time. Brixton have recently given us the Cromwell 1200, basically a copy of the Bonneville. Looked at in isolation, it's a fairly decent looking bike, although I'm personally not a huge fan of the Morris Minor green paint. The tank is a bit big and a slightly weird shape, but you only really notice that when comparing it to the, in my opinion, perfectly proportioned Speed Twin. Now, the real foot de goût here lies in the headlight. Okay for the company logo, Brixton, with the cardinal points around the X, not massively original, but it's okay. But you need to stop there. Don't then go and repeat the cardinal points a few centimetres away in the headlight DRL. It's too much and it doesn't look good at all. You would think that Ducati, coming from the land of good taste, would exhibit flawless design. I mean, just look at the aesthetic perfection that is the Panigale. So it took me a while, but I did find a gaffe. And no, it's not the winglet stuck on the side of the front fairing because they do serve a purpose, at least when you're doing over 180 miles an hour. No, it's these black dots on the screen of the Desert X. The psychedelic mirage-inducing pattern would drive me to distraction while crossing the Sahara. And the screen isn't even adjustable. Ducati, please spend the time and money on an adjustable height mechanism. We can live without your funky dots. Let's go back to Triumph for the next design slip that annoys me. The Tiger Sport 660. A harmless consensual design, if ever there was one, is it not? Aha! But look at the clock, and more specifically, these totally unnecessary white lines and circles telling you where each warning light is. Why? It reminds me of cars in the 70s and 80s when manufacturers would draw sort of fake instruments on the dash to hide the fact that the instruments you would have got if you'd bought the GL trim are not available on your poverty spec model. Next victim, the XSR900. Now, I had a quick go on one of these the other day. It's a fantastic bike to ride, but a case study in poor taste. We'll skip the seat, which is more inexplicably weird and ugly than questionable taste, and concentrate instead on the colours. Now, you're always treading on thin ice when you mix more than a couple of colours, especially when they're of similar but not quite the same hue. And here Yamaha have treated us to a veritable feast of clashing yellows, golds and oranges. In no particular order we have the wheels, the side reflectors, the forks, the fork adjusters which you can't see in the photo, tank graphics and if you live in the UK or Holland for example, a yellow rear number plate. Oof, can't we just tone it down a little bit Yamaha? Sorry Triumph, but I'm pointing at you again. To be fair, I don't think you're any worse than other manufacturers, it's just that I'm more familiar with your bikes, having owned quite a few. And this time, it's my own Speed Twin 1200, at least before the paint job. Who thought putting a high-vis yellow stripe on the matte grey tank of a modern classic was the way to go? Covering it up with some brushed aluminium effect vinyl was the first mod I did, and I know many other owners that have done the same. I think most people would agree that the V100 Mandelo is a beautifully designed bike. They've even managed to make the green and gold combo look good, which isn't an easy feat. But then they had to spoil everything and bring out a special edition, the Aviazioni Navali. Still looks fabulous, I hear you say. Yes, it does, until you take a closer look at that front mudguard. They just couldn't resist, could they? An anchor next to the brakes, which is, I suppose, a dad joke type reference to the fact that, like an anchor on a ship, the brakes on a bike are there to slow you down. How funny. And to compound the error, Motor Guzzi has modelled the anchor on Peppa Pig's smile. So I think we should call it the V100 Peppa Pig edition. And I could go on, I'm sure there are many more examples, but why don't you let me know of the worst unnecessary design tweaks that you've come across on motorbikes? It's just a bit of fun, and remember, we're not talking personal mods or customization projects here, but genuine gaffes committed by professional design teams. 
If you include a link to a picture online, I'll try and compile some of the best ones and let's see if we can't make a second video. Anyway, that's all for today. As always, thanks for watching.